Just see, when you get information like this, one of the beautiful things about it is you can turn and share it with others. How many of you already have come to a point that you have nieces, nephews, younger siblings, brothers and sisters, and children and grandchildren that you would like for them not to have to go through what you went through because you went to them and shared with them, say, look, I want you to sit down for just a few minutes. And I want to share something with you. I want to, I want to show you a way of, of asking a question that will answer almost any question you come up with in life in such a way that if you ask the question, you'll come out with a wise answer and a wise decision and a wise use of your time. How many of you would like to tell your children and grandchildren that? Yeah. When I found this lesson, you know what I did? Pastor Jackie, this is the first time she's heard of this. I called my oldest grandson in Texas. And his name is, well, I called him. And uh, <clears throat> I told him, I said, look, I've got some information that you need to know right now. You need this to go forward. He has great plans already. He's a thinking young man that thinks. He's not even 20 years old yet, but he thinks. He's making plans. He's writing things down. So I got some information you need to know. I said, what I'll do, I said, if you'll do this, study this, go to this website, look at these lessons, I said, I'll give you $25. Not a lot of money, but it's enough for an incentive. Just to look at some, I said, in fact, what I'll do, your sisters are old enough that they need to know this. And I said, what I want to do is I want you to let them know if they want to get $25. They can study these lessons with you. So, but this is what I'll do. I say, if you will get them, I said, I'll give you $25 for each one of them that sits down with you and listen to this. And I told them to include, you know, I told them to include, because I knew she would want to, is my youngest. She won't really get a deep understanding of this. Not letting know, not, not to be hard on her or harsh with her, just let her sit and listen. And if she doesn't understand it all, that's okay. If she doesn't pay a lot of attention, she's playing with a doll or something, uh, that's okay. I said, but get her to go to listen too. What a blessing. If it takes, and they don't have to be that going through, I would love for them to have a testimony like Pastor Jackie. You guys laugh when I say it. The worst thing that has happened to her in her life was me. <laughs> That's the truth. You know how people get up and they go through their testimony, and I went through these years that I had this, and these years that I had that, and you know, I was caught up in this and caught up in that. She go to thinking the only thing she can think of that happened to her that was bad <laughs> was me. <laughs> I had to go through these years with him, and he was doing this. And, oh. Now they've turned into some good years, yeah. We've been married, we just forgot our anniversary. We've been married so long, we forgot how long we've been married. Don't tell them how long we've been married. We just, we just, we just, we, we just had our 54th wedding anniversary. <laughs> the way we found out is our daughter called us to wish us a happy anniversary, a belated happy anniversary. And uh, we realized, hey, we forgot. <laughs> oh, my 
Yeah, we've been married 54 years. And I can proudly say that for over 25 of those years, she's had a wonderful husband. <laughs> for how many of those years? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that, that's her tale, those other, those, other, those other years. But just think, if you take hold of this, and I'm going to get back to it right now, don't keep it, share it with them. Let them know. What we're going to do is we're going to take three questions and turn it into one question. That if you're willing to ask it for yourself, and if they're willing, those that you love are willing to ask it for their, themselves, they will come up with a wise use, a wise decision, and a wise use of their time. This question is not talking about the right use or the wrong use, the right or the wrong decision, but a wise decision. It goes past just right and wrong. It's a wise decision. And I'll come back to Solomon here, but I want to make sure that I give this to you. Make sure that you have this. We're going to take three questions and turn it into one question. And that one question, the only thing a person has to do is ask the question. If you're not asking the question, if you don't want to ask the question, then you would be like the people that I was going to show, share with you, and if I have time, I'll still share with you. See, they're, 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 if you walk away from wisdom, if you walk away from asking the question, you're, you're either naive, you're a fool, or you're a scoffer, a mocker. A mocker is someone that mocks you for wanting to be wise. For wanting you not, for you wanting not to be a fool, for you going to church, for you paying tithes. They not only won't do the things that a wise person will do, they will mock you for doing it because you're doing what's right or want to do what's right. And the mocker is a step above the fool. There's a cure for being a fool. That's outlined here in the Bible. Amen. See, the naive are the young. I mean, the really young. They just don't know. And they come up and they'll, 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 you tell them, uh, you, shouldn't, you shouldn't do that, sweetheart. Oh, nothing's going to happen. Oh, you, should, you shouldn't do that, honey. Oh, it's be okay. They can't see what you can see. You know Chances are, this isn't going to turn out right. This is not a good thing. I don't want you doing that. But because they have no experience, they're naive. And the book of Proverbs talks about that. They just haven't lived life yet. So you want to intercede for them and you want to help them. And sometimes you have to make them do what's right. Because you know, you can see. Now when a person comes to the point of being... The fool, the fool is the one that you say, that's not a wise thing to do. And they say, I know it. Yeah, it was me. I know it. I'm going to do it anyway. That's the fool. I was a fool. You know what's going to happen if you do that? You're going to ruin your liver. I know it. Pour me another shot. You know what's going to happen if you keep adding that debt up? Yeah, I know. Probably have to file bankruptcy. I know it'll ruin, your, I know it'll ruin my credit for seven years. I, I know. I know. Don't have to tell me. I know. There's a cure for that. You know what the word says? The cure for that is tragedy. The only thing that will get the fool cured is when they get the result 
that God told them they were going to get from doing what it was they were going to do that you told them about. And the worst part about the fool, it says, they're going to get other people hurt. I think about when I was working, back when I was working, I had this one case where it was a car full of kids and the driver was foolish enough to drive drunk and to race down a hill it's out in the valley that kind of went like this. It was going downhill, but it was on a little two-lane street, but it was dangerous. And I can just see the car was full of kids, youngsters, teenagers. And I can just see their mother or father telling them, you shouldn't go with so-and-so. They're, they, they they're not right. Uh, nothing's going to happen. It will be all right. Killed all of them but the driver. See, the, the scriptures tell you that, that if you keep company with a fool, you're going to come to harm. Because not only are they headed toward tragedy, they're going to hurt other people. Amen. But it'll cure them. What do you think life would be like? You, you, you're driving a car and you can kill four or five other kids. And you've got to go all the way through life like that. You'll probably never drive like that again. That's the cure for a fool. And for the mocker, the scoffer, he's worse than the fool. You can't tell him anything. They know everything. You can't share anything with them. They demean you for even trying to tell them. Don't you know I know? They get, it's, you know what the Word of God says will happen if you correct a fool, I mean a mocker? They will hate you. Best thing you can do with a mocker is see ya. Wouldn't want to be you. <laughs> get away from them. And then don't keep company with a fool. Harm is going to come to you. So there are cures for these things. But what we want to do, want our children and our children's children to walk in wisdom. We want to walk in wisdom. So here's the first part of that three-part question. This, we're going to turn into one question. You need to write it down. In light of my past circumstances, my past history, what is the wise thing for me to do? In light of my past, what happened the last time I picked up that phone? and called. What happened then? In light of my past circumstances, what happened then? When I was caught up on alcohol, when I, when, when I was, and I decided, the last time I decided just to, oh, I'm just going to have a beer. What happened that time? The last time the Lord was leading me not to purchase something because it would overextend me and I did it, what, what, what happened that time? See, I can't answer those questions for you. Why? Your circumstances are unique to you. I can't tell you what's right or what's wrong. I haven't had your circumstances. You haven't had my circumstances. But in light of your past circumstances, what would be the, 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 the why? In, in, in light of my past experiences, that might be better than circumstances. What I, some, this is something I've experienced. In light of my past experiences, what would be the wise decision for me to make? In, in light of my past experiences, what would be a wise use of my time? 
How can I redeem the time? I don't have to go through that that I went through before. Why? Because I know what happened the last time. I have experience in this. This is something in the past. I know the results of the last time. That'd be a good question to ask. Even for the kids. In light of their past experiences, what did you do the last time you were told to? And you didn't. Or what was in light of the last time you were told and you did? Your past experience. I got what they said. I got, I, I got what I wanted. I was obedient. And it came out great. Maybe I should be obedient again. In light of what, you know, my past experiences and what the Word says I should do, what should I do now? Pretty good question, huh? That's only one part of it. So we're going to take these three things, we're going to turn them into one. The second question would be in light of my current circumstances. See, that's a better place to use the word circumstance, isn't it? This isn't the experience, but in light of my current circumstances, what would be the wise thing for me to do? In light of the fact that I got X number of dollars this left for this month, and I got X number of days left this month, that's the current circumstance, is it? What, what would be the wise use of my money if I want to eat every day? In light of my current circumstances, what would be the wise use of my time? Right now, this week, I have plenty of time because this has happened, has a holiday in the middle of the week, and, and I could do this, and I could do that, and I get off early on this day. In light of my current circumstances, what would be the wise use of my time? Pretty good question, isn't it? But what's the prerequisite for these two questions? You have to ask. You have to ask. And the third one is, in light of my future hopes and dreams, what would be the wise thing for me to do right now? Man, this question, what are my hopes and dreams? You know, I, it might, I, maybe I shouldn't have that drink because I'm planning on going to school to become, uh, get a law degree so that I can get hired by the FBI and they don't hire people with a history of drunken driving. Maybe I shouldn't have this drink. In light of what it is I want to do in the future, maybe this drink could cost me too much. It might not, I don't know what drinks cost now. It seems ridiculous to me. I'd have been better off if they had cost that much because I couldn't have afforded them. But I'm believing a cocktail now costs somewhere around 7 or $8 or something like that. We could get it for 50 cents a shot. <laughs> <laughs> that means seven or eight dollars. <laughs> it seems horrible. <laughs> but maybe I shouldn't, you know, maybe this is going to cost me more than seven or eight hundred dollars. Maybe this is going to cost me my future hopes and dreams. Pretty good question, huh? What if you could get your kids and teenagers to ask that question? Like my grandson that has these great plans. And he just, he came up with these plans all on his own. Junior college, college, and what he wants to do after college. He, did, he made a change. He just, it's just the Lord. 